Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival is finally here. With new food, exclusive merchandise, nightly concerts, and more, this is one festival you don't want to miss. And today we're giving you all the tips you need to have the best day ever at Epcot and make sure you only eat the best food. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. The 2023 Epcot Flower and Garden Festival runs now through July 5th with over 15 food booths, including the new Brunch Cot booth. The Flower and Garden Festival is all about, you guessed it, flowers and gardens. So expect to see lots of topiaries, miniature gardens themed to the world showcase countries, and lots of garden accessory merchandise, plus a whole bunch of orange bird, if he's not sold out, that is. Before we get into the food, let's cover really quickly all the other things going on during this festival, because even for Disney Food Blog, it's not all about the food. Garden Graze is a plant-based food stroll, and that's back this year. Buy any five items marked as part of the food crawl, and then head to Pineapple Promenade for a free lime Dole Whip and wildflower seed packet. Dole Whip and seeds. Who doesn't love that? The Garden Rocks concert series performances are free with Epcot admission and take place at the America Gardens Theater. Internationally known artists will perform Friday through Monday. Local bands will rock the house Tuesday through Thursday. Catch Smash Mouth, Blue Oil, Oyster Cult, the Pointer Sisters, and more. You can see the full lineup on our website. Stay tuned for a hot tip that'll help you guarantee a seat at the show without having to wait hours in line, too. For 2023, a new Princess Tiana topiary can be seen in the American Adventure Pavilion, and a new Encanto topiary scene features Mirabelle, Antonio, Isabella, and Luisa near the park's main entrance. You're going to see over 20 topiaries throughout the park, though. You can also explore a butterfly garden with loads of real butterflies, tropical gardens, an English tea garden, that offers free tours throughout the day, and a bamboo garden, among many others. Spike's Pollen Nation Exploration Scavenger Hunt is back. Guests may purchase a map and stickers for $9.99 plus tax and fill in the map as they search for the plants Spike has pollinated. There are eight prizes to choose from for completing the scavenger hunt, four plates and four cups, and guests can choose one plate or one cup. The Extravaganza Scavenger Hunt is an extra Easter season activity, which will begin on March 13th for a limited time. This one is also $9.99 and comes with a prize. Look for items including apparel, glassware, kitchenware, magnets, all bearing logos of the festival and its attractions. Orange Bird is the main mascot for this one, but you'll also find Figment and Snow White themed lines this year. The Orange Bird Little Golden Book is available in a bundle with the Orange Bird Sipper at the Citrus Blossom booth this year. And if you want the most in-depth information about the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival from the team you trust, that's us. Our 2023 DFB Guide to Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival is available now over at DFB Store. Com. It is packed full with color photos, reviews, pricing, tips, and so much more to help you get the most out of your festival day. Our viewers get a special discount. Just type in code YouTube at the checkout. And now our choices for the best food at this year's festival. We're starting out with an incredible dish. It just looks and tastes amazing. This is the new chicken and waffles at the Honey Bistro. The dish features crispy honey brine chicken and honey sweet cornbread waffle with whipped honey butter and spicy honey for $6.75. The chicken is crispy and juicy and the cornbread with those little jalapeno bits in it is wonderfully savory, which balances out the sweetness of the honey butter. The chicken was a little on the fatty and chewy side for us, but the dish as a whole was still absolutely incredible, particularly with just how the flavors mix. And this is a pretty big portion too, so definitely worth it. Next on our best of the fest list, the Taco Vampiro at Hardin de Fiestas. The Taco Vampiro is a returning dish from the past, and while it is $8.75, we think the price is justified because it's really good. It features barbacoa beef and a corn tortilla with crispy grilled Monterey Jack cheese, salsa ranchera, and esquites. In the past, this one's been okay, but could use more seasoning. This year, it stepped up its game. We found the taco to be deliciously crispy and cheesy on the outside. Combine that with the nice kick from the salsa and the tasty barbacoa beef, and you got an amazing dish we'd absolutely order again. Need a drink to pair with all those tasty eats? Well, the frozen desert violet lemonade is back. It's a staple at the Flower and Garden Festival and a staple in our best of the fest. It's at Pineapple Promenade. The drink is refreshing. It's not too sweet. It's very flavorful with a slight floral note. Plus, it's non-alcoholic. 
Also at Pineapple Promenade, the spicy hot dog landed on our list this year. This is a spicy hot dog with pineapple chutney and plantain chips. It's eight bucks at Pineapple Promenade. And it was truly spicy, like one of the only things we genuinely say is spicy at the festival. The spice really comes from the sauce, so you could ask for less of that if you want. While the hot dog and the bun are pretty basic, the toppings do make this a star. The pineapple salsa, crunchy plantain chips, and spicy sauce make it really, really killer. We could see this being an easy item to pick up and enjoy for lunch while walking around the fest. Now, before I head on over to talk about the fried cinnamon roll bites at Brunch Cut next, you need to know about what's turned out to be a best-selling Flower and Garden Festival shirt. Our exclusive DFB Festival shirt features stunning flowers, beautiful butterflies, and of course, Spaceship Earth. It's perfect for this festival and for your whole family. Head to dfbstore.com to pick yours up. Okay, back to those fried cinnamon roll bites at Brunch Cut. Brunch Cut is new to the festival, mm, kinda. Basically, it's the same building that's been there for a long time, and the menu's pretty much the same as what the menu used to be last year, but they just renamed the booth to Brunch Cot because everybody knows how much everybody loves brunch, right? So one favorite here is the fried cinnamon roll bites, formerly at the Sunshine Griddle booth, and they come with cream cheese frosting and candied bacon. The filling is generous. They're loaded with cinnamon and sugar, and the cream cheese icing pairs well with all those flavors. In the past, we felt that the candied bacon didn't really mix well with the icing, but that didn't bother our reporter this year. The flaky pastry combined with the cinnamon and sugar was fantastic. Try them for yourself for $4.75. It's a pretty good deal. Now, another returning favorite is also on the menu at Brunch Cot this year. The shrimp and grits here are not to be missed. This dish comes with blackened shrimp and cheddar cheese grits with brown gravy and sweet corn salsa, and it is shockingly good. When we've had these in the past, we found the grits to be nice and buttery, while the salsa gives the dish a level of sweetness plus a little kick. This year, they delivered once again and were actually our favorite thing at the entire booth. The seasoning has a touch of heat, but it isn't overwhelming. The grits had a lovely texture. Everything mixed pretty well together. Get it for $7.25. And yes, there's another favorite at Brunch Cot. The avocado toast is here this year. This might sound like a dish you can make or get anywhere, but believe us when we say this one is worth a try. The dish is made with marinated toy box tomatoes on toasted ciabatta, and we wish the portion size was bigger for the price, but the avocado itself was seasoned well. The toppings were wonderful, and the dish is beautiful. Plus, those fresh tomatoes add an amazing zing. This is one of the dishes that's part of the Garden Gray's food crawl too. Get it this year for $6. Now, if you didn't get an orange bird sipper, did you really go to the Flower and Garden Festival? The drink and sipper combo at the Citrus Blossom is a great way to get a delicious drink that'll cool you down as you walk around Epcot and a souvenir to take home. The orange lemon smoothie that comes with the souvenir orange bird sipper cup at the Citrus Blossom is non-alcoholic, making it a good choice for the whole family. And it's literally like drinking an orange sherbet or a creamsicle in the best way possible. Grab this combo for $15. Also at Citrus Blossom, the new orange sesame tempura shrimp is one of the best things we eat at the festival. That's why it's on this list. The shrimp are lightly fried, which prevents them from being overly greasy, and the sweet sesame chili orange sauce is full of citrus flavor, sweet and delicious. It's got a little bit of heat, but not too much. Plus, it comes with a decent amount of shrimp for just $7, making it totally shareable. The Coconut Trace Leches has returned to La Isla Fresca in 2023. What makes this treat especially unique is that it is plant-based. It features a vanilla cake soaked in oat milk, almond milk, and coconut coconut milk with toasted coconut. The coconut flavor, while certainly present, wasn't too overwhelming, plus the cake was super moist, but not to the point of being soaked. It was one of our favorite desserts in the entire festival last year, and we think it could become one of your favorites too. Plus, it's part of the Garden Gray's food challenge, so you can have a delicious treat and work your way up to get the prize. Try this one for $4.75. Now, the beignet caramelisse at Fleur de Lis is a caramelized beignet filled with vanilla cream and glazed with caramel fleur de sel. And yes, it's every bit as indulgent as it sounds. The treat is thicker than your typical beignet and the crystallized caramel glaze is incredible. It's basically a creme brulee donut. If you haven't tried this already, add it to your must get list. You can thank us later. Grab it for $5.95. The Vienne Rose Frozen Slush is a returning drink at the France booth and it is one you should not miss. It has been here for years at the festival and it's still just as good. It's made with vodka, Grey Goose Lange Vodka. I don't know how to say that and Saint-Germain elderflower liqueur and white and red cranberry juices. The drink is $14.50, making it real pricey, but it might be worth it for you. It's light, sweet, but not overly so, and incredibly refreshing.
refreshing. Seriously, this is our ideal drink for a hot day in Epcot and its pink color makes it great for photos too. Next is the house-made cheesy crab wontons at Lotus House. This returning item might sound basic, but sometimes there's nothing better than a simple snack done well. The house-made cheesy crab wontons are $7.75 and they are absolutely delicious. The filling had a stronger crab flavor this year, which we really enjoyed. Plus the wontons were tender and crunchy and the sweet and sour sauce on top was a good addition. Next, let's talk about the orange blossom saffron cake from Tangerine Cafe. If you want a dessert that's unique and fun and light, grab the new orange blossom saffron cake. This is $5 and it's a lot nuttier than we expected, but not in a bad way. It reminded us of a nutty almond paste type treat. The raspberry syrup on the bottom is thick and really adds a wonderful flavor to the cake as a whole. Plus it's a good sized portion, making it a decent value for five bucks. Just note that if you have a nut allergy, you're gonna want to avoid this snack. Now this returning spicy chicken gumbo at Magnolia Terrace is one you will not want to miss. It's made with andouille sausage and Ben's original long grain and wild rice, and it's $6.25. It's not super spicy, but there's definitely a heat here, which we really enjoyed. The rice was wonderfully chewy, the chicken was soft, and overall the flavors were fiery and well-developed. It might be a heavy dish on a super hot day, but it impressed us. Moving on to the best of the fests, let's talk about the best of the fest for kids. If you've got a kiddo who simply loves Fruit Loops, then add Brunch Cot to your must visit list because the Fruit Loop Shake is a returning favorite here for little ones and it's definitely earned that spot. It tastes like drinking cereal milk, but with an even stronger Fruit Loops flavor in a good way. The cereal on top adds a nice crunch, it's not overly sweet, and the drink as a whole is delightful. It's like having breakfast and dessert all at once. Get one for the kid in your life or yourself for $4.75. Now the Frushi is an iconic returning dish at the festival and one that kiddos and adults could really enjoy. You're gonna find it over at the Hanami booth in Japan. Basically, it's what it sounds like, a fruit-focused sushi with strawberry, pineapple, and lychee wrapped in sweet rice and pink soy wrap, served with whipped cream, drizzled raspberry sauce, and toasted coconut. It gives you all the fun shape of sushi and the adventure of a pink soy wrap and sweet rice with the familiarity of fruits and whipped cream. Fruity, sweet, and totally shareable. It's a snack that's pretty fun to eat and delicious. Win, win, win. Get it for $7.50. If you want something new at the festival to give your kids, head on over to the Primavera Kitchen in Italy to try the chocolate hazelnut pudding with cookie crumble. This is priced at $6.75. It's a good choice for the little ones, even though it's a little pricey for what it is. The design on this one is adorable, though. It's meant to look like a planter with dirt on top and a little plant growing out of it, plus a gummy worm. And it practically yells fun at you. Plus, the chocolate and hazelnut flavors make it approachable. Give it a try and snap a fun photo while you're at it. Next on our Best of the Fest is the Best plant-based dish of the festival. This time it's the Impossible Lumpia at Trowel and Trellis. This delicious treat is made with Thai sweet chili sauce. It's $5.50. It's got some sweet flavors balanced with a bit of heat and is sticky on the outside thanks to that chili sauce. We do want to note the Impossible meat on the inside of the roll didn't mesh perfectly with the sweet chili sauce on the outside. There's just a slight clash in flavors there, which is something to be prepared for. But that doesn't prevent this from being one of the best plant-based dishes we had at the festival. Our plant-based eater who tried this fully admitted that it's one he'll likely get over and over again. Portable and tasty makes this a win, so it might be worth a try. Now it's time for our best booth of the festival. This time around, we have a tie. First is Brunch Cut. In the words of our reporter who tried this, Brunch Cut is a killer booth. This pick was probably obvious based on the number of dishes above from the booth that made our best of the fest list as individual items, but it does deserve it. It's kind of like they brought all the best dishes from last year's festival and put them in one booth. The shrimp and grits are amazing. We could eat dozens of the cinnamon roll bites, and the avocado toast is colorful and delicious and healthy. The Fruit Loop Shake is super fun for kids, and the Lox Benedict here was actually really good too, especially with that runny egg on top. Get one thing here, get a few, or get everything. No matter what you decide, we have a feeling you'll leave happy. And the second best of the fest booth here is the Fleur de Lis. This is another awesome booth at this year's festival. And while fewer of its dishes made our best of the fest list individually, the various menu items here are still fantastic and as a whole, the booth has a great sense of balance. We thought the croissant with goat cheese was heavenly, the gnocchi was delicious, the chocolate tart was rich and nutty, and the beignet, best of the fest. Pair that with the delicious La Vie and Rose Frozen slush and the lovely wine, and you have an absolute winner of a booth. We do have to give one warning though, many of the dishes here feel a little bit heavy. That can be tough to deal with when facing the Florida heat, but we still think the dishes are delicious and worth it. What we especially love about this booth is that it has a great variety of items, both savory and sweet. You could easily get one savory item, one dessert, and one drink and leave satisfied. And that is the sign of an amazing booth. 
Moving on to the festival tips. All right, so opening day is always the most crowded, but if you can, avoid visiting the festival on the weekends, especially those holiday weekends coming up. Weekdays are gonna see much shorter lines for the food booths. Spring break crowds will keep Epcot busy throughout the first half of the festival, but if you come at the beginning of May, you might hit that sweet spot of slightly lower crowds before school lets out for the summer. Pack a tray. Yeah, like a cafeteria tray, so you don't have to worry about juggling all those little paper food boats and drinks as you find some Somewhere, hopefully not the top of a trash can, to set down your food and eat. And have a plan of attack. Over at DisneyFoodBlog.com, we've got free printables of all the dishes at this year's fest and a handy map to help you navigate the festival. When you get to Epcot, don't forget to grab a festival passport as well so you can check show times and more. And for all the info right at your fingertips, don't forget about our DFB guide to Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival over at DFBStore.com. It comes with a full money-back guarantee, so if it doesn't help you plan, just let us know. We'll refund your purchase. Want to see those concerts but don't want to spend time waiting in line to grab a good seat? There's a dining package for that. Garden Rocks Concert Dining Packages offer guests a chance to pair lunch or dinner, either a three-course meal or a full buffet based on location, at a participating Epcot restaurant with guaranteed priority seating for an evening show on the same date. Packages start at $47 for adults and $20 per child. You'll also find same-day walk-up dining packages at Regal Eagle Smokehouse for just $35 per person. This is a great deal. It's a quick service meal, a great quick service meal, so you don't need to plan the time for a full sit-down meal and then you still get your guaranteed seating at the show. Also, catch Spaceship Earth's newest light show, Beacon of Light, featuring the song What Else Can I Do from Encanto after it gets dark. It will play periodically throughout the night. So that's a wrap on this year's Epcot Flower and Garden Festival, Best of the Fest. But we have full reviews of every single booth. We bought every single food item there. And so Best of the Fest or not, head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com and read through all of our reviews so you can get a good idea of where your money's gonna be best spent. And be sure to sign up for our free newsletter to get the latest, most up-to-date information from the parks, like the dates for Epcot's next festival, or updates on all that construction in the center of Epcot. We'll drop the link to sign up for our newsletter in the description of this video. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. Can't wait to see what you enjoy at the festival. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.